compact to mid-sized trucks are something that is a sweet spot in the sense that you get the best gas consumption when you go into the Maverick standard hybrid technology, which is going to get you near 40 MPGs. Furman Ford has given us the 2023 Ford Maverick Lariat in shadow black over black onyx interior. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides and comparing this to the Hyundai Santa Cruz, that's going to have more torque than this with the standard powertrain. They offer the turbo charge, which you could get a 2.0 turbo in this as well. New for the year will be a trimmer, which will increase the clearance by one inch. Specially tuned suspension. The trimmer package is not available in the hybrid. Only the all-wheel drive variants receive it in the appearance package. We have the black appearance package here, so the grille is going to be blacked out. The Lariat will add wiper activated headlamps, LED signature accent lights. On the lower with the matte black clearance, 8.3 inches, and it goes up to 8.6 inches with the trimmer and nearly 10 inches of clearance, which is Toyota territory. Obviously it's not as rugged, but the appearance will be for the trimmer. It's going to be more dynamic than the Honda Ridgeline because when you get the HPD package, all you're getting is a grill, flared out fenders, upgraded wheels, no suspension lift, nothing to do with any tuning of the engine, just your standard 3.5 VTEC. 18 inch mock face ebony alloy wheels. Approach angle at 22 degrees for the hybrid, it's at 21 degrees. A length at 199.7 inches, which is going to be longer than the Hyundai Santa Cruz, shorter than the Ridgeline by quite a bit because that's over 210 inches. A wheelbase at 112 inches, 4.5 four, 4 foot bed. The platform is the same as your Bronco Sport Compact SUV, so that's what you're getting here. A compact truck with capabilities to do some light off-roading and some maneuverability because this is more of the base trim, 2,000 pounds of towing with the payload over 1,500 pounds, which when you're a price tag around $30,000, $32,000, it's really hard to option something much more. But when you go into the Hyundai Santa Cruz, that one will tow 3,500 pounds in the standard, 5,000 pounds for the all-wheel drive. Same thing with the Ridgeline, and that one will be the least gas efficient, where this one's going to be the best gas efficiency comparing to all three. The only truck in its class with a keypad on the exterior, so if you like to leave your key fob inside, you can do so. The exterior appearance is going to be a little bit more settled, but again, just option the trimmer package if you really want to have that off-road look. Obviously, you'll pay for it, but when you get the Lariat, the interior you're gonna see. You get pretty much all the bells and whistles. Spare tire is going to be tucked underneath. I'm not a big fan of the lower part of the rear bumper because here I feel like it's going a little bit more older than newer and when you're getting a new truck because this was all new for last year, you're wanting it to look a little bit more dynamic or a little bit more rugged because it's a truck. Cargo bed length at 54.4 inches with a width of 53.3 inches between the wheel well housing at 42.6 inches. Cargo bed height at 20.3 inches giving us a total of 33.3 .3 cubic feet of storage. Departure angle at 21 degrees. For the hybrid, it's at 22 degrees and they back the performance with a 2.5 liter FHEV hybrid, inline four cylinder, combined output at 191 horsepower and 173 pound feet of torque. That's paired to a CVT continuous variable automatic transmission, achieving 40 to 33 MPGs, reaching 60 around 7.7 .7 seconds, going inside the Ford Maverick actually one of the best in class for head and leg room, starting off at 40.3 inches, leg space 42.8 inches. ActiveX trim seats, eight-way power seat adjustment for the driver, four-way manual adjustment for the passenger. The flat dashboard contains some storage in front of that six-inch infotainment screen. C-structure for both of air vents. More of a retro design for the lower part of the dash with some buttons and a storage compartment right here. This is a touch screen. On your device and select Ford Maverick once it is found. We do not have navigation, but we do have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio. Put it into reverse and you have trajectory. It is a reverse camera. You click this plus and you can line it up for the towing. Towing underneath with dual air vents, 
climate control, a USB 12 volt USB C area for a wireless charging pad or just for your cell phone, and a lot of storage compartments. You have one here in the front, one here in the back, and then going right here with another one right here, your rotary knob for your gear lever. It's gonna be soft for your elbows, open up its side, and it's a deep storage pocket. The steering wheel is a three spoke, multi function. The gauge cluster can go through an array of information for the driver in the center. Otherwise, it is analog for your TAC and odometer. I have it set so you can see the best EV coaching. The door panel integrates into the dash. One touch up and down for your windows. The grab handle is a little bit more unique for the Maverick, and it's going to be pretty soft for your elbows. And you store your bottles vertically. For the back seats, I'm at 39.6 inches of headroom, 36.9 inches of legroom, which is quite a bit for the size of this compact truck. Two USB-C ports, storage behind both of the front seats. The door panel has more of your everyday materials on the top, soft for your elbows, and the storage pocket is going to be the same as the front with the bottle holders vertically placed. Seats fold up, but no 60-40 split. It's all the way up. You do have storage underneath the floor. The floor is not completely flat. You can also fold these downwards. Sitting into the center headroom is still no issue, nor is leg space, feet space is. I am against the rails of the front seats. Sharing butt and shoulder space because it's not the widest vehicle in its class, but you can still fit three adults my dimensions without any issues. 191 horsepower combined with a 1.1 lithium ion battery pack. That's gonna get us 40 to 33 MPGs, which is the best in class comparing to the rivals. Performance numbers is not going to be the fastest. That will go to the Honda Ridgeline. Then it'll go to the Santa Cruz, which when you get into the Santa Cruz Turbo, that is a night and day difference than the base trim, which also has 191 horsepower, but the torque outperforms the Maverick. The towing is going to be the least in class, and to give her a little go, hybrid, no more. If it gets up to speed, fine. The, the engine noise will filter in. That's something to be expected. When you're driving it on hybrid, though, it's really quiet when the engine isn't being performed. As for maneuverability, you can get in, in and out really good. Has a little bit of weight. Your brakes also has regenerative brakes, so that will help quite a bit. Turn radius, about two lanes. Let's rock and roll. Because it's a CVT transmission, I feel this also holds the vehicle back a little bit. Is the dynamics in the drive bad because of it? Not really, because it's also hybrid, so you're expecting it to engage at some point to the combustion engine. This is gonna take me to some things I like and dislike, and that's what we're gonna start talking about. The first thing that I like about the vehicle is this is the only vehicle in its class that gets that kind of MPGs, and it's still a work truck. 1,500 pounds of payload, and you get over that. It's nearly, set, it's nearly 1,600 pounds of payload. That is quite a bit for a 4.5 foot bed. The second thing that I like is how versatile the interior is because you can fold the seats down. It doesn't fold all the way flat. The last thing that I like about the vehicle is the storage compartments that's in the front. This is a smaller truck. They configured it where you can still fit a couple of bottles in the front on the door panel vertically. So they really did optimize space as best as possible. And here in the center, you have even more storage space or pockets that you can just throw pretty much anything that you need for a daily work use or your everyday compact truck. Three things that I dislike about the vehicle starts off with the touch screen. The position that it's in is a little bit more so than a 90 degree. So it's almost like this instead of like this, in which if you're tall like me, you have to adjust your seat back to see it perfectly flush. It's not necessarily a big deal because we don't have navigation. You only have AM, FM and your Bluetooth streaming audio but still it would make it a little bit more user friendly in this open pocket, maybe put a door here so it's not necessarily an eyesore. The second thing that I dislike is this is the Lariat trim. We don't have 
power seat adjustments for the passenger and they actually take off about two power seat adjustment on the driver's side they give you the lumbar support that's the only reason why you have eight-way power seat adjustments otherwise it would be six-way power seat adjustment you have it in sport mode look at this baby That's at full capacity. The last thing that I dislike is in the trunk. I kind of wish they would have done like the Santa Cruz or the Ridgeline giving us an actual trunk in the bed to give a little bit more storage capacity because it is a smaller compact truck. But going against the rivals, this is definitely something that's a day in and day out use. You have a little bit more interior space inside here than you will for the Santa Cruz. The same thing for the Ridgeline and that one's a longer vehicle so they really do maximize the capacity of the interior space as for drive dynamics it feels good on the road you don't really feel a lot of the impurities or imperfections and it's a hybrid so you're going to get maximum fuel economy with the capabilities of towing and still using it as a truck you need more rugged performance i would definitely option the trimmer package and that's also the newest variant i'd like to thank Furman ford for giving us this 2023 ford maverick for our car review if you're already a subscriber thank you for being part of the hawkeye community if not i don't know what you're waiting for click the next video in the subscribe button check out the merchandise website instagram leave a comment and a like